Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a trigonometric system. And this is similar to an Amy problem. I think it's from 1986. Um, it's slightly different. It's asking for something else there, but the problems are very similar. Anyways, so we have tangent x plus tangent y is equal to 5 and cotangent x plus cotangent y is equal to 5 over 6. And we're going to be solving for the x values and the y values. Great, so I'll be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first one. So my first method basically involves using the reciprocal um, property of cotangent and coming up with a easily solvable system. So we can write cotangent x as 1 over tangent x and then 1 over tangent y, and that is going to be 5, 6. Now, this is a system, and obviously you can call tangent x equals, you can set tangent x equals a, tangent y equals b, and you're just going to get a, you know, system from here. So, if you do that, you're going to get a plus b equals 5, and 1 over a plus 1 over b equals 5 over 6. Let's go ahead and simplify here the second one. By making a common denominator, we get b plus a divided by ab equals 5 over 6. Now remember, a plus b is equal to, I was about to circle that, a plus b is equal to 5. So this is 5, which indicates that ab must be 6. Okay, so this implies that ab is equal to 6, and we already know a plus b is equal to 5. So this system is quadratic. You can basically use substitution here, replace b with 5 minus a, and let's do it. We get a times 5 minus a equals 6, and then 5a minus a squared is equal to 6, and then if you put everything on the positive side, a squared minus 5a a plus 6 is equal to 0. This is a factorable trinomial, so I can basically find two numbers whose product is 6 and whose sum is negative 5, and those numbers are negative 3 and negative 2. Keep a long story short, it can be written as a minus 3 times a minus 2 equals 0. Great. So from here, even though we're just getting the a values, uh, the b values depend on the a values, and a and b are kind of interchangeable. Uh, so we get a equals 3, which implies b is equal to 2, uh, or a, a is equal to 2, and that means b is equal to 3. Now let's go ahead and back substitute we said that tangent x is equal to a, right? That's what we called a, and that's what we called b. So this means that tangent x is equal to 3, and tangent y is equal to 2, or vice versa, tangent x is equal to 2, and tangent y is equal to 3. And from here, you can definitely, if you wanted to find the x and y values, you can just write them uh, as x equals 10 inverse of 3, and then obviously you're going to get a solution, and then by adding pi to it, you're going to get the other solution because um, those are going to have the same tangent. But the, the inverse tangent function only going to give you the principal one uh, because it's that's how it's defined. But anyways, we can basically write uh, add n pi to this, and y is going to be 10 inverse 2 plus n pi. And, you know... The same thing pretty much for the x and y, are just going to switch around, 10 inverse of 2 plus n pi, and y is going to be 10 inverse of 3 plus n pi. Obviously, you can find numerical values in degrees or radians, whatever you want, uh, by using the calculator. I just didn't want to do it, I'm just going to leave it like this, because this, these are the exact forms. Make sense? Hopefully it does. Great. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method. And I think second method is very different from the first method uh, because you're going to notice uh, when we do it, uh, it's, not, it's not that similar to the first one. So sometimes, you know, the first and second methods are very similar, even though we do th things differently. Uh, and there's a reason why I call them different methods because, you know, they're done differently. But in this case, I think they're very different, in my opinion. You could argue otherwise, and please let me know. Anyway, so... Let's rewrite our system. We have tangent x plus uh, co oops, I messed up. Tangent x plus tangent y is equal to five, and cotangent x plus cotangent y is equal to five over six. So that's my system, right? So obviously, we do have a, another thing we need. We didn't talk about is um, these values are 
going to work because they don't make the equation undefined. So with tangent and cotangent, you've got to be real careful because, um, you know, tangent is undefined at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 and cotangent is 0 and pi. So we got to make sure but they, they, they work, so they're good. So with the second method, instead of using the reciprocal identities, I can actually um, use them directly, like I can use the uh, givens directly. How? Well, we were given two things, and uh, they're kind of related, right? For example, cotangent x, even uh, cotangent x is the reciprocal of tangent x. So why not multiply these things, right? A lot of times, uh, you know, people ask, like, how did you come up with this method? Why would anyone think of that, right? Well, people didn't, they just thought about an idea, and they just applied it, and they noticed that it works, and then they just, be, it just became a method, right? You don't just discover things, you have to try them. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. So, anyways, this has been tested and tried, and it works. So, I'm going to multiply these equations. Um, first of all, why not, right? I can do it. And second, um, when I do, I'm going to get uh, something nice, uh, which is tangent, for example, tangent x times cotangent x is equal to 1. So, let's go ahead and distribute it. Tangent x times cotangent x plus tangent x times cotangent y plus tangent y cotangent x plus tangent y cotangent y. And it's equal to 25 over 6. I'm going to write that later. Well, this becomes 1 because they're reciprocals, and this becomes 1. So we get the 1 plus 1, which is 2. So I get the following. And at this point, I want to write the um, cotangent y as 1 over tangent y. So I can kind of put my equation in this form, you know, tangent x over tangent y, tangent y over tangent x, plus 1 plus 1, which is 2, and the whole thing is equal to 25 over 6. 2 is 12 over 6, so if you go ahead and subtract uh, 2 from both sides, um, well, you didn't have to, but I guess we could do it. Uh, that's going to become, uh, or we can bring the, two, oh, it doesn't really matter, no big deal. Okay, okay. this is going to equal 13 over 6. Now, here's the thing. What makes this uh, equation real, uh, the second method real different is we're kind of looking at the ratio, right? And this is the reciprocal of that ratio. So if I call this u, happy birthday, right? So this, you're going to get u plus 1 over u equals 13 over 6. And, well, can I keep the long story short here? You're going to get two solutions. u equals 2 thirds and u equals 3 halves. You can do this, right? I mean, that's not too hard. But so this gives us tangent x over tangent y equals 2 thirds and tangent y over tangent x equals, let me just work one out and the other one you can just kind of work on your own. So what do I know? I do know that tangent x plus tangent y is equal to 5. So I'm, I'm talking about two numbers whose sum is 5 and they're, they're in the 2 to 3 ratio. Though. So this implies that tangent x needs to be 2 and tangent y needs to be 3 or uh, vice versa. Tangent x is equal to 3 and tangent y is equal to 2. And this pretty much gives us the same solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.